I come in peace. I'm not really here to fight y'all today. Uh, I do think that I need to just talk about some things and address some things. Just show a little bit of film for y'all today. We ain't doing nothing else. Um, you know, Cowboy Nation is kind of in a weird place with Tyler Biotis, and I've seen this before with some of these players. You know, what happens with this broadcast film with a handful of positions, uh, when you make mistakes, it just gets blown up and maximized bigger than what it really is i always say great people on 68 plays not to six to eight plays and what happens is if, if you play offensive line if you play safety you know cornerback if you play quarterback you can play a damn near perfect game but if you make one or two mistakes that get highlighted by the broadcast view, then you had a bad game by the standard of the casual fan that's just watching on television, right? Like if you're a linebacker and you make a wrong read, then you can kind of live with that. If you're a, a guard and you sort of miss a block a little bit, um, you know, if you're a one tech and you kind of get beat, you don't really see those plays, right? Um, but it's always the the holding call that'll get called out. It's the drop pass. It's the big play given up. You know, so a lot of these dudes' career lives and dies by this, you know, this highlight system on broadcast view. So Jeff Heath was a guy like that. Cowboy fans saw a handful of bad, bad plays from, from Jeff Heath. All of a sudden, Jeff Heath can't tackle. All of a sudden, Jeff Heath can't cover. Um, and it turned into, I'll take anybody but Jeff Heath. Like, that was the vibe. It wasn't Vach's vibe. It was like people's vibe. So them, it was, it was people's vibe that, hey, I'll take anybody but Jeff Heath right now you get Darian Thompson and you get excited and you realize he's a little damn worse than, than Jeff Heath especially because there weren't many free safeties you could just go and get I think this parallel is fantastic by the way you know, if, if you say, Vach, give me a free safety that ain't Jeff Heath, then my answer would be, okay, well, where would I go to find you a free safety that's not Jeff Heath, right? Uh, it'll it'll have to be the draft. They don't just have free safeties just on the market because free safeties are valuable. Those positions aren't, you know, they don't get filled easily. They're not just a, it's not a talent filled, you know, pool of players, you know? So if you ain't got one, you just kind of ain't got one. I think the center position is is weirdly just like that. Um and Cowboy Nation is kind of in this same situation with Tyler Biotis. Now, everybody shouldn't be feeling this way about Tyler Biotis, but I just see it a lot on the timeline in the comment section. People that may call my, you know, call my show, they're just a little down on him. You know, I, and and I'm I'm football guy. I don't know everything football guy. I'm not like national media football guy. I don't just keep tabs on everybody. But I'm draft guy, so I, I really do. You know, I can name some guys or whatever. But if 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 I had to tell y'all to name me a top ten receivers or quarterbacks or running backs, you could probably do that. Top ten centers is a weird conversation to pull off without Google. You know, and even when you get to the to the if if you can list out the top ten, you'll get about six guys down before you go. Okay, this don't look like McDonald's no more. These dudes don't look, you know, great or top tier or anything like that. I think understanding where the league is at the position will help you understand um, kind of, you know, how good or bad your guy is or is, you know, supposed to be. So if there's a gang of centers on the market and Tyler Biotis ain't playing great, then you go and get them centers. You bring them in. You, 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 you let them fight for their spot, and then you're good to go. But if you... If there aren't many good centers in the league, there might be three elite guys. There may be four other guys that you know. After that, it's just steady dudes and bad dudes, right? And I think that when you're in those, you know, exchanges with player pools or whatnot, as long as you're not the team that got the bad guy, then you're fine. Or the team that has one of the bad guys, you're fine. I don't think we have one of the bad guys. I think Tyler Biotish is a cool middle of the road about what you're going to get in the league at center type guy. Right now, just like I said earlier, man, the 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 market dictates what we should feel about Tyler Biotish. Right. And Tyler Biotish in real life, if it's if it's if it's 32 centers in the league, 32 starting centers in the league, Tyler Biotish is in the, is in the top half of them, right? And then, you know, I know there are some butt vice people here. I'm not opposed to, to growth and getting better. If you can find a center that's better than Tyler Biotis and, and everything works and it fits and it makes sense, then let's boogie, right? Like you had the opportunity to draft uh, Tyler Linderbaum, the uh, center from Iowa, you know, just this year. If you draft Tyler Linderbaum, then fine. You won't hear a word out of me. I feel like you would have upgraded that center, then you move on with your life, right? But if you don't get Linderbaum, that don't mean you go, okay, well, I got to draft a uh, draft a center in the in the fourth round now because I got to have a center. It ain't like that because if you're drafting somebody that's not as good as the dude that you're trying to get rid of, then you're hustling backwards, right? 
And you know, I just I just think sometimes it, it, it comes down to this I don't watch film culture. It comes down to the Troy Aikman said so culture or Twitter or Reddit said so culture or uh, this highlight tape dictates how I feel culture, you know, and we've seen especially last year what happened with Tyler Biotis. Tyler Biotis opened up with a with a weird first couple of games of the season, but he's a year two player and we're gonna talk about year you know, year two players and offensive linemen like how they feel or whatever, right? Um, but he really had his best games like towards the end of the season, like the his his last six or six or so games. Tyler was fine. Like Tyler, I, I'm, I'm not calling. I, you know, I, I got to be careful with my words because y'all will go straight to the comments and be like, "Vach, you said Tyler was great." Tyler played some good football towards the uh, towards the end of the season. The last six or so games, he was fine. But if you're a Cowboy fan and you live in highlight culture, and all you've heard in the first five or so games is, "Oh, Tyler gets run over." Oh, we played against the the football team and Jonathan Allen smoked the shot Tyler Biotis I mean what do you expect Jonathan Allen to do versus Tyler Biotis uh, uh, oh and, 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 and that just kind of sticks in your brain and there's not really nothing that, that you can do to fix that feeling in your brain one because when offensive linemen you know when we I said when we like I'm still offensive lineman Fuck it, when we make bad blocks offensive lineman when we make bad blocks we get highlighted but they don't highlight us when we make good blocks you understand what I'm saying so if they show a highlight of Michael Parsons getting blocked by Rashawn Slater but then right after that they show a video or a, they show a highlight of Michael Parsons beating Rashawn Slater for a sack we'll say oh well those two had a good game those two had a pretty good battle right but if it's only Slater highlights it, it may be two or three of them. oh Parsons got smoked if it's only Parsons highlights, it could be two or three of them. Then Slater got smoked. So I think y'all need to, when I say y'all, I may not be talking to you personally. Y'all just listen. But them people that I'm talking to, they're y'all. Y'all need to, you know, get into, you know, really, really understanding what you're looking at and understanding what really happened before you come out with this inflammatory opinion. If you want to come out and say, hey, man, Tyler Biotis didn't didn't play his best football last year. I can I can feel you on that. I can dig that. But if you just come out and say Tyler Biotis was trash last year, that's false. If you look at some of the games towards the end of the year, Tyler Biotis played really, really well. But they don't make highlights for, for offensive linemen like that. They may highlight us if we're blocking downfield or something, but that's a, I, I keep talking about offensive line like I'm part of this shit. Um, they they may highlight us as a as a part of a big Zeke run. Oh, Zeke running, Joe Looney's running down the sideline with him. Then all of a sudden, Joe Looney has a good game. In real life, Joe Looney got smoked that game. I, I remember doing a film session on it. Um, but uh, but you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, we just got to have an understanding about where players are in their career. Cowboys have have gotten spoiled, you know, to where. And this can get into a deeper thought here, but you know, uh, Zach Martin showed up day one playing, and he was fantastic. Um, you can say the same about Tyron, even though it, it it took him time to go from the right side to the left side with the whole Doug Doug free thing. Um, and then there was the whole Travis Frederick coming in and like playing playing immediately. Now a lot of that could be okay. Well, we drafted these dudes in the first round. Their first round talents. Then let's boogie. A lot of that could be uh, Bill Callahan is a really good offensive line coach, and he pulled something out of those dudes very young. Um, but mostly, mostly, if we're not talking about first round picks, and this is even the case with first round picks, um, but Tyler's, Tyler's, was a, he was a fifth round pick. So we had to, you know, be aware of that fourth or fifth round. So he's a day three guy. Um, so we got to be aware of that, right? <clears throat> we just can't expect Tyler Biotis to just come out year one, year two, and just be fantastic. He's gonna lose his battles. He's a, he's a day three guy, right? If he, if he didn't lose those battles, he would have been a first round dude. He's gonna he's gonna lose some battles early in his early in his tenure, uh, because you know the league looks at technique differently than college does. The you know big in the league is different than big in college. You could be big in college, get 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 to the league and be a little small. That's why offseason peanut butter is is you know so important. But I think what's most important is is have you made strides have you made improvements for a year two player now if tyler biotis came out and he was trash for two years then now we have a problem with tyler biotis and he don't need to be uh he he he, he you know we need to strongly consider what we're gonna do at center if that's the case but if you've been keeping up with his career he played a little bit his freshman campaign and then his year two he got a little better he may not be the guy that you want him to be he may not never be that he's a, he's a, he's a day three guy but that's what center is, um, you know. If you uh, if you like if you like take that and go okay, well, well, 
you know, have you gotten better from year two to year three or whatever, right? If he has, then you hold on to him. If not, you you look around. I think Terrence Steele is on the same type of, uh, you know, path. But the difference is that we have more eyes on Terrence Steele because Terrence Steele was so bad as his freshman campaign. But Terrence Steele got better. But Terrence still getting better, and, and, and that's kind of weird too. Like I, I would love to, you know, just sit and think about this more. But I wonder, you know, because Terrence Terrence played well, but he didn't play, you know, unbeatable football. Like Terrence still, Terrence still, and Tyler Biotis were kind of on a similar path. Like they weren't great rookies. Terrence was a little worse. Terrence was 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 horrible as a rookie. Tyler was okay, but Terrence did make bigger strides. Tyler got a little bit better. But even in their second year, they both kind of had struggles, right? They, you know, Terrence played a little better than his than his freshman campaign, but he'll still have some problems here and there. I think that's normal for a year two player, and the same the uh, same with um, Tyler. I think with these offensive linemen that aren't first round talent dudes, I think you got to give them two scoops, which is two years of off season peanut butter, and that's when I think we can really make the evaluation on these dudes, right? Um, I typically want to wait three years for all players to really see who they are, but especially with offensive linemen, because you can be big. Like you can be like Terrence Steele, ten, like in real life, Terrence Steele, like 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 what? He like six four, three ten or something, three fifteen. Terrence big as hell, technically, but if you look at the film, he looks small because man big is different. Um, and I think it really takes two years to get man big going. Now, mind you, we don't have to worry about that with Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith is big as hell right now. Tyler big, swollen, thick right now. Um, then there's more man man body for him to go. Um, Tyler Biotis wasn't, you know, he wasn't big prior to, uh, you know, that's probably why he's playing playing center also. Ty, you know, Tyler wasn't wasn't big or anything like that. So I still think, you know, this offseason is the offseason. This is his second scoop of, you know, you know, make me big and strong peanut butter, or whatever. So uh, now I got eyes on Tyler Biotis to see. Okay, you you you've gotten better from your first year to your second year. We know that you can play. We know that you're a NFL starting caliber player. But can you continue to get better for us? Uh, and I think that's uh, going to be helpful. Also, too, some I think that's going to help Tyler um, is he has a more powerful player to his left now. Um, now what <clears throat> the advantages Tyler gets from Connor Williams being there is you know these combo blocks these movement type blocks these screens if I'm Tyler Biotis and I'm playing center and there's a right and 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 there's Connor Williams to the left of me and there's like a nose in front of me like a zero take in front of me or maybe like a guy shaded over me and we're outside zone blocking I gotta block this dude for a little bit but it's Connor Williams' job to take over this dude so I can go climb the linebacker. I hope that's not confused with my hands and shit. But if I got Connor Williams, who's the more athletic dude, I know that Connor Williams can reach this guy in front of me because he's the athlete guy. He's the good feet guy. He's the hand and feet technique dude, right? So I know that Connor Williams can seal this block. That's what I have confidence in with Connor Williams. But if it was the opposite, right? If the combo wasn't working outside zoney, if the combo was working inside zoney, and there's like a dude between me and me and Connor, and me and Connor got a combo, this dude with power to the linebacker now, that turns into a different fight. That turns into okay, well, me and Connor Williams gotta try to push Deron Payne to see what happens, you know. Uh, and 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 Connor Williams gotta, uh, he's gotta deliver the first blow to make life easier for me. And Connor Williams may not have given you strong blows to make life easier for Tyler Biotis. Now, in those particular situations, maybe not those outside zone situations, but we didn't look at them. We didn't worry about Tyler reaching people. We worried about Tyler being powerful. Tyler um, Biotis, not Tyler Smith. Um, not to be confused with Tyler Linderbaum. I'm fucking Tyler's here. Um, so now, see, we didn't have problems with reaching or, or like athlete stuff. We had problems with power stuff. So if I got to do power stuff and I'm, and I'm already not power guy and my combo partner is not power guy, then we just got to live with the fact that we're just going to be a collective of non-power dudes. But if my combo guy is power guy, 
I think Tyler Biotis is going to look better in those exchanges because my help guy is power guy. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting, man. I think it's going to be fun to. Um, I think Tyler Biotis is is, is going to be better than y'all than y'all than y'all think he's going to be. And um, I can't wait to cover him every time we uh, we get you know big O line shakeups. You know I get excited because I'm O line guy, and um, there has been big O line shakeup. You know with the uh, departure of Lael and Connor Williams, so we get to see what a full blown Terrence Steele looks like, what a Tyler Smith looks like. And what a year three with two scoops of offseason peanut butter um, Tyler Beatis looks like. All right. Um, I hope this conversation helped y'all a little bit. If you're still on the ledge about to jump off uh, because you think Tyler Beatis is uh, going to just be hogwash, dirty, water, dumps of juice, trash. I can't help you if that's the case. But uh, I think Tyler Beatis has made uh, some some pretty good strides. And I can only expect for him to to get better and to get better with his size and his strength and his technique and maintaining blocks and brand new help guys around him. So that's all I got for y'all today, man. Make sure you hit all the algorithm buttons for the volume. We need likes, 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 subs, subs, subs. We're um, at 300,000 on the volume. That's incredible. I would love to claim like at least 70,000 of that <laughs> At least 70,000 of that But uh, you know We'll let the number of people do All the number things um, Also follow the volume On social medias Follow me on all my social medias Vach Lombardi V-O-C-H-L-O-M-B A-R-D-I um, Also my non-football platform Switch.tv Slash Vach Lombardi And uh, y'all hold it down For the Dosky Wilson Peace Whiskey man Till next time Holla <laughs>